Former Philadelphia police officer Ed Saul Mendoza has been sentenced to 8 to 20 years in prison following the deceasement of a 12-year-old Thomas T.J. Sidero. In April, Mendoza had pled guilty to third-degree murder and possession of an instrument of crime as part of a plea deal with the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office after fatally taking the life of Sidero in the back on March 1st of 2022. On Monday, July 22nd, Mendoza was sentenced and told the court that he felt sorrow and regret. Philadelphia District Attorney Larry Krasner stated that there were times when surveillance footage contradicted some of what the former cop was saying, including that Sidero pointed a weapon directly at the officer. He also stated, per the outlet, that he was standing in the street when he fired the weapon, not standing over Sidero on the sidewalk. It was also added that prosecutors said that Sidero was on the ground and unarmed when Mendoza, who was in an unmarked police car, him in the back. The boy was stated to have fired a shot at the vehicle and injured one of the four officers who weren't in uniform inside the car. Sidero had been with an unnamed 17-year-old at the time reported that evidence presented to the jury showed Mendoza fired three shots at the 12-year-old, two of which were said to have been fired after Sidero had discarded his weapon. On Monday, prosecutor Clarky Belgine discussed some of the reasons prosecutors have been pushing for a higher sentence of a minimum of 20 and a max of 40 years for Mendoza. Quote, Mr. Mendoza searched online for plane tickets from New York to the Dominican Republic, which is where he was from. Belgine also stated that the prosecutors also said that former officer had then searched for the top five countries with no extradition treaties within the United States. While discussing his behaviors after the incident, stating he immediately searched for the flights to Havana, Cuba, after learning that was one of the countries. Belgine stated, This was a shocking crime. Sidero being on his hands and knees when he had his life taken, saying there was no evidence the boy knew the four men he had aimed at that day were police officers because they were in plain clothes. That was a fair, just, and equitable sentencing in this case. Mendoza had initially been charged with first-degree murder and voluntary manslaughter charges in Sidero's incident. So let me just say this. Uh, my condolences to the families uh, directly out there who are affected uh, by the loss of life. Um, I've heard too many times that people are like, well, you know, uh, all police need is better training, uh, more training, uh, put more funding and more money to make better officers and yada, 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 because nobody really wants to deal with the fact that you just have a lot of people that are not meant to be police officers. You have a lot of people out there, just like in the medical field, who are there just to get a check. Just like you have a lot of teachers that are in the school system just to get money. Um, this is all over the board. You have fast food workers that are just at the job just to get money. It's not that they actually care about, you know, serving the common man with the teachers. It's not that they care about, you know, serving the kids and trying to teach them with the police. It's not that they care about serving and protecting and upholding an oath and, and trying to make sure that the streets are safe for normal citizens. No, they're just there for money. But for whatever reason, people want to believe in something that is better than them. And because of this, because of this blind faith that is handed directly over to unknown persons, this is what you get. This is what you get. But nobody wants to focus in on it. Nobody wants to look in on it. Everybody that believes in the police always wants to stay. Oh, it's just one bad apple. That's not indicative to the, the rest of the 100 percent of police officers directly out there. That's just one bad apple. Let's let's just let that blame just directly be squarely on him and not the other officers. No, it's on every other officer. Because a lot of these other officers know of officers bad misconducts. They know of their files and their records and how it is that a lot of these officers get transferred to one place to another place because they did the wrong things, because they were found stealing money, because they were found uh, forging, because they were found uh, deciding to coerce somebody into a crime 
or admitting something of which they did not do, locking up the wrong person, planting evidence. Like I said, the list goes on, but nobody wants to pay attention. Nobody wants to look at it because it's not specifically happening to them or their community. And this is why I sit here and say time and time again, the moment in time that you refuse to acknowledge the wrongdoings that are taking place, the happenings that are going on sooner or later is going to hit your doorstep. And to the people that you ignored, to the people that you did not want to stand up for, speak up for, you didn't want to show any type of interest, you didn't want to highlight these stories, the moment in time, all of those people that you looked over, you pushed to the side, you ignored, you tried to overpower their voices, those people are not going to support you. Those people are not going to show up when you need them to show because when they needed you first, you did nothing. You stood still, you stood down, you looked away. And that's a lot of communities in the United States at this moment in time. Whatever incidences like this take place and happen, people always look away. People always want to give an excuse. People always want to try to justify the actions. So now here we are. Here we are with this officer deciding to take the life of a young boy. And you hear the officer, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so I'm so regretful. Uh, I wish that this did not sit up there and happen. And the justification that they are trying to give is that, hey, the young man had a weapon directly on him. But nobody's looking at the fact of why it is that he may have been carrying a weapon on him. Maybe the area that he is in is directly too safe. Maybe you have people out there that might have tried to jump him a few times. Maybe he is not getting the protection that he actually needs. Maybe the parents out there aren't specifically teaching their kids the way that they should be teaching them, which then led to this young man to go into the end result of going to procure a firearm of which he should not even have. Again, I'm not justifying. I'm not saying that it's okay for him to sit up there and have this. I'm just stating that a lot of kids out here have to find a way to survive. If not, they're going to lose their life in the craziest part about it is this kid did not lose his life to any of the ops directly out there. He lost his life to somebody that was supposed to protect and serve the community. And instead of protecting and serving the community, that police officer decided to take a life. Not only did he decide to take a life, but he also tried to get a one-way ticket away from the United States because he knew that he was going to be made to be the face of whatever it is that he did along with whatever it is that other cops just so happen to do on a daily basis. He was trying to run from everything that he did, from the loss of life, from the families that he broke apart. He was trying to run from that. He did not want to uh, you know, be responsible for his actions. Crazy, ain't it? And it makes you think how many other officers have also tried to do the exact same thing whenever it is that they have ended up taking an innocent life. Hmm. Makes you think. But anyways, let me know what you guys think about this video and everything that I stated in the comment description below. And as always, peace, love, and stay tuned for the next video.